welcome back to the People's Choice Podcast. I missed you all, all my peeps that have been rocking with me since day one, or if you just found out about this <laughs> this episode, uh, I'm glad to have you guys here. And I'm joined here with a very special guest. I'm here with Vaughn Peltier. That is an amazing man. I've met him through Optiviva, which we'll talk more about that. But also, there's so much more to him. He's in the medical field. He's done so many great things. I've overcame a lot of adversity, but loves to help people. He has transformed so many people's lives and their health journey, not just their health journey, but also their mind. And I'm really proud to have got to know him. And me and him are really close. He shouted me out plenty of times on the People for the People's Choice podcast. So, and I do appreciate that. So, I'm going to give you a clap and I'm going to put down this microphone again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank That's you. That's crazy. I'm so used to on the stand now. <laughs> it was a, we're official now, my peeps. <laughs> yeah. And that's a great looking mic. Uh, it's beautiful. And and uh, we can definitely, um, you know, uh, definitely want to, you've uh, done some great interviews. I've really enjoyed your podcast and um, you're so good at um, asking questions and really getting to know people, what makes them, what makes them really um, live their lives and make the choices they make. And that's what we need to hear. Yes, definitely. And just, you know, speaking of that, I mean, your life, I mean, I've seen just the progress picture. I'd love to put some videos that's okay with you of that you've done for people. I mean, it's been truly amazing. Like, I mean, it's just mind blowing. So before we get to that, I'd love to just start from the beginning, Vaughn. So let's talk about, you know, your upbringing, where you're from, and uh, we'll get into all that. Yeah, uh, great question. Thank you. Uh, so I am originally from a little town called Holyoke, Massachusetts, or Holyoke, however you want to say it. Um, but I grew up um, in a family of six. I had three sisters, three brothers. Um, but it was um, really um, very tumultuous. Um, I have a long family history of alcoholism and uh, just a lot of... Um, well, I believe there were mental health issues that were just, you know, back when I was born in 1964, uh, it was always co- mental health was considered a character flaw. It yes, wasn't yes. necessarily something that people tried to understand. We had no idea what, um, you know, ADHD was or depression mm-hmm. or anxiety or, I mean, just the plethora of uh, mental health. So um, being that I grew up in a family uh, of six, yeah, I was the fifth child um and I was actually the baby when I was born. Um, and uh, my mom, I had never met my father. Um, and by then, my mom had already married twice. She had married twice. Uh, I have a total of six fathers um, right now. So, um, and uh, my mom has passed away. So, uh, there won't be a seventh dad. Um, but, um, uh, you know, it was just a, um, just a, it was, it was kind of a, a tough thing to go through. Um, tough thing. So, um, but that, you know, I don't regret it. Um, it helps me understand others and, uh, with no judgment, I can be, uh, give that unconditional love because I've come from one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum. So true. Like, I mean, even just meeting you for the first time, it's just like, I've known you forever. Like you're just so awesome. And you had your dog with you and your lovely wife and you were just so greedy one of the coolest stuff. I put that picture there too, you know, where, you know, like I've known you forever. We were just talking about, you know, our journey and how we got started. I mean, you know, they, that definitely uh, had a lasting impact on, and, um, and that hit, hits home too, you know, especially saying dealing with uh, the alcoholism family and stuff. You know, I went through that, talked about that plenty of times in my appearances, like guest appearances on the shows uh, from family, like as far as like parents to cousins, you know, best friends, it, it's an ugly, uh, it's an ugly beast of addiction is no matter if it's alcohol or whatever it is. 
Yeah. Well, I can just tell whoever is, you know, watching this that, um, you know, you are better just being you. Uh, we are, we're going to love you more. If you're just you, you don't need to add any anything to you to uh, make life exciting. Life is exciting um, and wonderful. So, um, but we'll go, we'll go on that um, even further. But I will tell you that, um, you know, growing up, uh, you know, I don't know if, if you are familiar with Ed Milet's story, but I definitely relate to it. Um, Ed Milet's dad, you know, Ed is a, you know, big speaker, uh, motivational guru. Uh, he grew up in an alcoholic family and um, his dad would be physically violent and come home drunk. Um, Ed learned how to read body language and look at people and kind of get a, a quick read on them. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, be able to assess whether he was in danger or not. And when I saw you, um, I knew you were, I like your aura, what you put out was amazing. And I just knew you were good people. And then when I started looking into your life and following your podcast and, and just knowing your heart, um, you're an incredible man. Thank you. I, that means so much to me. I'm trying to get better at taking compliments because I'm, I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you. Because it, it's, it's it's great to hear, but I don't want it to ever go to my head either. Or like I think I'm so pretty, but you know, I, and I feel like you're the same way too. Because I mean, you know, like I said, you know, I mean, people life really changes. Because I've seen people almost every day, different people, dramatic changes. How, how many people have you uh, have impacted? Your life? Uh, yeah. So uh, as you know, as far as um, you know, Optavia and what I'm currently doing, um, I we've helped in the last four years. We've helped eighty people so far. Awesome. Maybe, maybe eight plus. Um, I, I haven't counted lately um, because um, now it, my goal has absolutely changed um, with Optavia and health coaching. And when I initially got um, engaged with Optavia, I needed to lose some weight. So, uh, you know, I was working on my master's degree and I was fat and I was unhealthy and um, I was eating, you know, Whoppers and McDonald's and, you know, all the good stuff, which is all amazing. <laughs> That's all uh, good stuff. You know, I, I love all those things, uh, but it wasn't, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not getting any younger. Um, so it's just not helping me be the best me. And uh, I want to be around a little while longer. So I'm, I'm working on uh, eating a little healthier. Um, but um, was that uh, your, was that your why? Like moments of like wanting to like dive all into because a lot of us different like we go through this health journey and weight loss journey is like our why is like you know what's mm -hmm. supposed to keep us grounded and focused that was yours uh so you know my why has changed um and um you know you bring up a great point and we'll i'll come back to that um but you know the narrative that we have in our heart and our head the things that we tell ourselves um on a daily basis uh you know uh it really leads us to our destiny. But my why has definitely changed. When I jumped into Optavia, um, I my head was, my goal, my why was actually to grow ac academically and do the corporate thing and, you know, mm -hmm. elevate myself through academia and through the medical system, um, which I can still do now. But, um, uh, but Optavia was just a weight loss thing. I was just going to lose some weight. It was a diet and um, over the years, uh, you know, working with other people, helping them change their lives, um, watching them um, prosper, uh, grow emotionally and intellectually. Um, it, and, and I will tell you that it, it varies in degrees. Not everybody, this isn't a co co cookie cutter thing. It's you get what you put into it. So um uh not everybody it, you know for some people this remains a diet and that's and that's all it is and um sadly you know that's the case but for uh, many others uh, i've had a profound impact on them um, they have gotten you know uh from uh you may have some female listeners who can relate to this uh my, just like my wife uh we've been married 27 years Congrats, um, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. The thing I didn't understand was, um, as a typical man, I would take my wife shopping for clothes. Like, say it was Easter and we needed a new outfit. Uh, I'd take her shopping and it would be, you know, breakfast, Starbucks, you know, and it would be a field trip for the day. And I was trying to make it special and, and I was, you know, having a good time. And we would go to the store and, you know, for women, they, you know, uh, they had to try it on and all those things. And at first, she'd be really happy uh, about shopping. 
And then about three, four outfits later, uh, which I mean, I, which unknown to me, she would like, she couldn't pick an outfit and she was always very unhappy with the clothing. I help, I didn't even like get invested and help her pick out, you know, clothing that I thought was stylish or trending or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she would come out very mad and very unhappy. And then I never, I like, I struggled. I was like, wait, I'm doing all the right things, right? Because I'm spending money, we're going out to eat, I'm encouraging you, I'm telling you you look beautiful. Why in God's name are you mad? Um, and, you know, uh, and I took it personally because I just was oblivious to what was going on in her. And what was going on in her was she would put on these clothes, feel terrible about herself and be disgusted and depressed. And she just wanted to go home. And being frustrated with that, I, you know, it, I didn't help. Um, so until we did this program and I saw her come out of her shell, she, you know, she no longer wanted to be the lady taking the pictures. She wanted to be in the pictures. Mm -hmm. She didn't hide behind the kids or have the kids stand in front of her. Or she, My wife is five foot. Mm -hmm. um, if she stands behind anybody, she's not in the picture. <laughs> um, so, you know. So I appreciate that big. <laughs> So I, I had no idea. So, you know, just watching things like that happen for people, mm -hmm. watching people discover that, you know, and, and um, even myself, uh, going from being an alcoholic to not being able to manage relationships to having a GED and not, I, I will tell you, I couldn't keep a job for an entire year because I was so immature and just so lost. And uh, I had no clue, no clue what life was really about, what meant um, that I kept chasing. First, I started chasing instant gratification, things that would just make me feel good right away. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I had this sit time in my life where I was living in pure fantasy. You know, I was going to win the lottery. I was going to become a rock star. I was going to uh, marry somebody rich, uh, you know, whatever, you know, whatever it was. Um and when I realized that, you know what, I'm just not that special, <laughs> you know, that, uh, that you are was, special, Vaughn. <laughs> well, 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 thank you. Thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, I appreciate that. But what I realized, so then I started looking at, all right, well, I got, obviously I have to do some work because the fantasy is not going to come through. Uh, so, you know, I, I, you know, first it was the long hair and I worked on my appearance and, uh, you know, I followed all the trends and I did that. Then uh, I went through a phase where I was lifting weights all the time and just trying to get really big and really strong because I thought that was the answer. And then you're still in great, in, in really great shape too. I see your you know, morning workouts. Yeah. I'm like, Oh crap. Look at you. <laughs> you make me want to run uh, on the treadmill or start doing some curls and stuff early in the morning. Work well, on that. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be happy to work with you. And it has been, you know, I'm 58. I'll be 60 in a couple of years. Less than and I feel amazing. Awesome. So uh, uh, that is available for anybody. And I can definitely help you with that. Um, but, you know, what I'm telling you is that all the improvements that I made myself, it, they weren't one grand action or one specific thing. It wasn't college. It wasn't church. It wasn't um, it wasn't losing weight. It was it's it's you get a little better each day at a time, one step at a time. Um, and you have to prioritize what is important to 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 improve on first. Um, you have to do that triage, just like when you're in the emergency room. We triage what's going to keep you alive. You know, one of the questions I had to pass when I was taking my my nursing license was they would give you a scenario. Four patients came into the emergency room and they'd give you all the vital signs and what was going on with them in their medical history, and you would have to determine which patient was most likely to die first and what you were going to fix. And they were very close. It was, so those were like some of the hardest questions to answer. And I think that's how it is with our life sometimes is what do I need to fix first to give yes. me that small to, because uh, an object in motion stays in motion, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to get in motion. And so you got to pick what is it that's going to start telling me to where I'm going to go and to where I can gain momentum and pick up speed. And for me, it actually turned out to be, um, there was a time there was, so I had my GED mm -hmm. and, uh, I had my, I had my four children and I was just, uh, 
just in a new relationship. I had just failed terribly in another relationship. I mean, I know I've been married 27 years. My wife, we've been together for 30 years. But when her friends met me, they told her, girl, you do not want to date this guy. <laughs> why and Why was that? What Did you have a reputation or already like that her friends knew of? Or? I had a terrible reputation. Um, I you, was, weren't, you weren't diving into that? Like just to... Because uh, well, I don't... I yeah, was, I mean, um, not you know, as long as it's you know, you're cool with that. Like, I was, I was, um, you know, the the song "Amazing Grace," Grace, yeah. uh, you know, saved a wretch like me. Mm-hmm. I was the definition of wretch. Um, I, uh, like I said, I, you know, I lived a a, a fantasy life where I just partied and um, uh, did crazy things. You, you know, I shared with you that one time I hitchhiked um, from Ohio to California. Um, true story uh and i did it on a whim um because i you know what i i think that i was at that point um so depressed and so so bitter um and i'll tell you that you know uh when life is hard it does two things either one of two it does one of two things to you it either makes you bitter or it makes you better oh um, amen to that i heard that on a, a quote a quote that um john norris gave me actually oh man that's that touch deep right there. Yeah. And uh and I and I'll tell you I was I was pretty bitter at first. Um and I I felt and it was um I felt that people considered me disposable. Um and a lot of that was because just about every relationship, including my parents to uh my siblings to you know uh romantic things, I I, I always felt disposable. Like people people just were going to just discard me once they had used me up. And um, so when I became a young, you know, adolescence, I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to burn you up first. If if one of us has got to get burnt, it's going to be you first. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, I was not, I was not a kind person. I I didn't have a giving heart. I uh, didn't have love. Um, And uh, you know, and it was painful. And I, the reason I turned to substances was because I didn't want to feel the pain. Um, but what I realized later in life was, okay, I can numb myself to the pain, but I also numb myself to the joy. And um, I wasn't enjoying my my children. I wasn't enjoying my family um, because I was just too numb. I was oblivious to the kind of unconditional love your, your children can give you and your family can give you. Um, and I was missing out. And it was that realization that I was missing out because I was scared of pain. I was being, basically, I was just being a real wimp. I was being a, I was being a pussy, okay? Um, I, you know, but what I realized one day was you can hurt me and it's going to hurt, but it's not going to kill me. Um, I realized that, um, you know, uh, that, you know, when you uh, play a video game and uh you're in god mode right you know that you know god, right? yeah <laughs> right so we, we all do right you have that code and you you never you never have to start over from the beginning you can die as many times as you want i realized that my days had been written in god's hand the day i was made and that mm-hmm. i'm not going to die until that day that he had already predestined yeah so I'm, I'm playing the game of life in god mode and so are you so I can make mistakes. I can get hurt. It's not going to kill me. Um, and I don't want to sacrifice the joy just to avoid a little bit of pain. Because pain is temporary. Life is temporary. Everything's temporary. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I want some joy. And I want now I want more of it. Because now I found out how to get it. I want more of it. That is, that is truly amazing, Juan, because, like, Anyone could literally sit in their own basically shit, you know, and just dwell on, you know, the hurt, the pain, the depression, uh, just life, you know. And, and uh, a lot of times we could feel like we're we're owed something, you know, like we're robbed of it if we didn't have like a loving family, or if we're even, you know, doing substance or doing alcohol, we would just go deep and deeper in. But it's amazing to see like and hear your backstory. I, I didn't know this part of you until really recently so you, you, you talked and I, I only know you how you are now so it just goes to show like 
you can make a change, you know, once you're ready. And once, you know, you're ready to give yourself up to God also, I know not everyone's religious or a man of faith like myself, but like, you know, it's amazing the turnaround that you could truly do once you've either made your mind up or, you know, you've turned to God. And that's amazing. Only you can get round false for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I get used to putting the mic down. <laughs> but uh, that's, it's just, that's just amazing. You know, and for you to do that. Like when can we talk more about the, the the hitchhiking, like was there some yeah. like amazing like life lessons you learned from there, or some crazy like? Because <sighs> that's just to me yeah. like, and and it's not like you were going to like see like family or anything, right? You just like up and left, right? Oh yeah. So uh, so uh, how it came about was I was uh, working in a restaurant, LB's, uh, mm-hmm. and basically I just worked so I could party. Um, and, uh, I just got hired two nights before I started my first day, I was out drinking with my buddies mm-hmm. and they were twins. These two little, two, they were little guys. They were like five foot, you know, they weighed maybe 130 pounds. <laughs> and, um, we were out drinking and they were driving us around. We were at Taco Bell, um, you know, jumping in the back seat and drinking. And then we'd get a, you know, tacos and we, you know, try to talk to girls and, um, uh, these guys pulled into the parking lot and they just started talking smack to my, to my, to my two friends, my two, my little twin buddies. And mm-hmm. I knew they were just like, they were just too little. They would get, they would get killed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, you know, I had, I had the liquid courage. So, um, I took this guy on and I, that's all I remember. Um, they, <laughs> they pulled me off the middle of the street. Uh, my eye was cut open, uh, they took me to emergency room. They sewed me back up. I went to work the next day. I had two black eyes. Nose was swollen. Lips were cut open. My lips were swollen. And I'm starting my first day. Um, <laughs> I know, yeah. right? You met me like, <laughs> so they put me in the back. They put me in the back and made me the dishwasher for a while uh, until I healed up. Then they let me come out. But um, uh, so I was, uh, you know, like, Two, three months after that, I was hanging out with uh, one of the guys I started working with. And we were at a bar. Uh, we just got paid on a Friday, day drinking, shooting pool. And um, he said, you know, uh, at that time I had a, I had the mullet, right? So I had the, the blonde bangs in the front and long curly hair. Do, do you have any pictures of that? I would love to see that. <laughs> I don't think I have any pictures of that particular haircut. But I do have pictures of, of the mullet with the long hair. Um, when, when I had hair. Uh, <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, he said, we, we were a couple beers in and he said, you know, he says, you look like you belong in California. He goes, I used to, I used to hang out in California. I got friends out there. He said, uh, he said, man, we'd have such a good time. And I just, I just looked at him. I said, let's go. And he's like, what? I was like, well, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to California. I mean, what, what the hell? Um, and you know, I maybe had $200 in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, he's like, well, how are we going to get there? I'm like, well, let's, let's just hitchhike. Um, so we went home, packed up our stuff, uh, our coolest clothes. And we thought, well, you know, we're 20 something young men. Who's, who's not going to pick us up, you know? So we just, we hitchhiked down the road and, um, we, they were just like, Hey, want a beer? Want to smoke a joint? And we like, we spent the whole, like, it took us three days, three or four days to get there. Mm-hmm. And it was just one big party, but there was like some really hard times. Like uh, the money was starting to run out mm-hmm. um, by the time we got to California and uh, we had stopped in Tennessee. Uh, and we're partying with people he knew there um, in this club that I had no business being in. Um, and uh, by the time we got to California, uh, thank God he knew somebody. Cause we were like, when we stopped in Texas, we were so tired from partying and, um, we laid down in this big field. The grass was really high. We laid down in this field. Um, we had sleeping bags. And uh, what I didn't know about was fire ants. Oh, man. Fire <laughs> I must have laid. Great, great introduction to this. <laughs> I must have laid in a pile of fire ants because they were in my sleeping bag. Like, I, so I, here I am just, you know, exhausted from partying, half drunk, half high. Uh, so fire ants are, are biting me, and I just keep picking up my sleep bag, moving from spot to spot, just praying that I get away from these fire ants. And there, but what I realized was I was just 
carrying them with me everywhere. It was, you know, and then uh, we we uh, we got a job at Taco Bell in California, and uh, we stayed out. We stayed out there for about a month, and I was like, okay, this isn't as much fun as you said it was going to be. Um, so I hitchhiked back to back to Ohio. Man, basically a round trip of hitchhiking. That's mm-hmm. that's so crazy. And it was dangerous crazy. and and just yeah. on a dime. Like, did, did any of your family like reach out to you or best friends like that? I wonder so, where you yeah. went. So, um, you remember when I talked about disposable people? Mm-hmm. Well, by then my family had given up on me, and all my adult siblings had gone on. They were they were just as damaged as I was. Um, they just express it in different ways. And, um, you know, a lot of times when you're with family that are um, destructive, you 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 may even forget them, but you have to separate. You have to distance yourself from them because whatever's on them. And that's you know, that was the thing. Whatever was on me was poisoning the people who loved me. And, you know, uh, and I don't fault my family for distancing themselves from me um, looking back. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I was toxic, you know, and, uh, and I still have two brothers who drink heavily Mm -hmm. and, uh, I love them. I forgive them for everything that's ever happened between us, but, um, I just, you know, I can't hang with them. I just, Mm -hmm. I wish I could. I just can't, Mm -hmm. I can't because, uh, I can't even, I like the conversation you and I are having right now. Mm -hmm. I could not have this conversation with them because they would just, they would just piss all over it. So. So sorry about that. And hopefully, you know, everyone has their time where things turn around now for your family that happens to your brothers. You know. Yeah. God's got a plan for us all. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm trusting, I, you know, I pray for them and just keep uh, hoping that they'll figure it out. Yeah. Definitely. So Vaughn, let, let's talk about uh, Optimiva. When you decided to become a coach, I know it started with um, with your wife. You know, um, joined the program, then you joined after my uh, quote that right. You are, you are, yeah. So she started. So we had been um, uh, our whole lives. Uh, we together that we were together. We had you know worked on staying fit and uh, healthy, but. Uh, you know, I, once you hit 35, 40 years old, your metabolism kind of slows down. Um, so it's harder. And, uh, you know, up until age 30, I had a high metabolism. I could eat whatever I wanted. I could eat as much as I wanted. I used, um, But uh, when I went to my, got my first degree in nursing, I got my associate's degree. Uh, I was working um, uh, at a hospital in Ohio. And I would come home at midnight and I'd go to Burger King. And I would get two Whoppers with cheese, a large fry, and a shake. And that was my, I'd eat that 11 o'clock at night and go, and go to bed. We were a hot mess when we found Optavia. Uh, we had done every, we had done every, every diet there ever was. We had done, uh, we, <laughs> yep, <laughs> I feel you. We, we did, we did beach body, Nutrisystem. We did, um, uh, the, um, Trying keto Weight Watchers, diet. Keto, yeah. No. Yeah, Weight Watchers, yeah, we go to the grocery store, by the Weight Watchers or the, uh, Smart Meal, or, you know, we just did all, we have, um, not to age myself anymore, but, um, I've had every piece of equipment since Suzanne Summers, um, Thigh Master, um, oh. to the, so, which I'm probably naming things that you don't even know what they are. Um, <laughs> my peeps that do know they're probably going to kill me in the comments or yeah so <laughs> if, you, if you know what the thigh master is um go, google it at, you know google, um you you'll you'll see uh or the gazelle or uh for a while their elliptical machines were the big things mm-hmm. and treadmills um just there's all kinds of equipment that has come out um and we bought we bought them all and uh we go like six seven months and we we quit and uh, this was the first program. So Jerry had just finished her bachelor's degree. Uh, I was working on my master's and um, she, she's, um, she was trying all the, uh, all the things and, uh, and also getting into like um, Mark, you know, the, the, uh, all the MLMs she was doing, she sold Lula Row, she sold Tinder, 31, um, Sensi, just all these things, you know, trying to just, um, you know, just help us pay the bills and, 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 uh, you know, make a little, and, and she liked the products. Um, I think sometimes she got into stuff just cause she wanted to buy the stuff. But, 
<laughs> but um uh you know uh we just found that you know um it wasn't it just wasn't you know com- what people promised it to be um so we so she she started so her friend from ohio guy she went to school with um had posted some transformation stories uh there of his weight loss and his wife's weight loss on facebook and some people that he knew had lost weight mm-hmm. and uh she said honey let's let's do this one and i was like oh good lord here we go here we go <laughs> Here we go again. And another one of these fad diets that, you know, we're going to do for three months. Like, I remember one time we had to like pack like blueberries and, and or, or fruit and, and, and meat and, and our side dishes in these little colored containers every time we freaking ate. And it was a pain in the ass watching, you know, washing the containers mm-hmm. and like, it was hardly any food. I was used to eating two Big Macs and fries, you know, and she'd give me this little portion of green beans and I'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's not it's like it yeah it. you know it's like it's just like drink. a snack or you know um you know but we did all that but she did the program and uh she lost 14 pounds in like two weeks and uh that's awesome. Awesome. okay all right that's cool you know and um uh i i had lost so i so i all right well i'll i'll eat your little rice crispy treats or whatever you're doing there and i'll and i'll do it and um uh you know happy wife, happy life. And it wasn't, it wasn't really expensive. And I was like, okay, I could do this. I'll do it. Maybe. Um, so I lost 17 pounds in two weeks and I was like, Oh, okay. This is all right. This is all right. Uh, I, I'll do this. Um, so, uh, you know, I only had to lose like 25 more pounds. So I lost 25 more pounds and I hit my goal weight. And, uh, it actually taught me to eat, uh, right, uh, taught me how much I, like, I didn't realize how many calories Mm -hmm. I didn't, I, that I was eating and how many I really needed to not feel hungry, but just to keep my body going good. Um, it's amazing how much those calories add up fast with the, like the Whoppers or the Big Macs and stuff like that. It's crazy. Like even like, like I love Chick-fil-A, you know, like a mm Chick-fil-A salad is the bomb. I love it. Yep. But it's like like a Chick-fil-A salad is like eight, nine hundred calories. You know, mm-hmm. and like I will tell you right now, my total like I can think you there's like all kinds of calculators out there. You can figure out your total daily energy expenditure. I mean how many calories you need per day. Mm-hmm. And and just to maintain my current weight, which I'm six three. Uh I'm currently today I was two thirteen. Um to maintain that. I have to eat about 1,900 calories. So if I eat a, one Chick-fil-A salad, which it's good food, right? It's healthy. It's good It's good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like, that's maybe 800. So that only leaves me 1,100 calories. Um, you know, one Starbucks coffee and you just lost 400 calories. Uh-huh. You know, jump on a Krispy Kreme donut at work because I'm a nurse, right? People bring us donuts on the reg, you know, uh, mm-hmm. There's a, there's another 300 calories. So one coffee, one donut, one salad, which doesn't sound like a lot of food. I've almost eaten my entire daily calories. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have to be smarter about the food that you select. You can, so, you know, 300 calories of M&Ms is mm-hmm. like a little cup. 300 calories of lettuce with, you know, some so a light dressing, you get like a whole cup and mm-hmm. what, which one's going to fill your belly more, right? The salad. salad yeah. um, not that I don't like some M&Ms every once in a while, um, but. <laughs> That's a special flavor. <laughs> I, like I would, you know, I had to eat like half the bag before. Um, mm-hmm. When I was in my twenties, a uh, box of cereal would last me two settings, two bowls. That was a box of cereal. <laughs> yeah, but I used a mixing bowl. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta put that little uh, gif in the video of like Craig from Friday when he got that big bowl and started pouring. It. <laughs> oh man! Because I used to be able to eat like that though, and it didn't it didn't affect me, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, as you you know, when I got older, I something happened, you know, and I was like, what? You know, it's like I then I had to learn how to eat, and it just made no sense to me at all. So, 
I hope I answered your question. I know I went all over the place. No, no, it was great. Yeah, because, you know, I was just curious on, you know, your journey because I know you joined it um, based off of, you know, seeing the progress from your life. But then I want to know, like, what was the switch where you're like, you know what, I want to now transform people's lives. Like, I want to help them. I want them to lose 17 pounds in two weeks and sustain and help it. Like, when did that switch happen where you decided to become a coach? Yeah, so that is great. That um, thank you for get, bringing me back on track. So that was like the diet aspect of it, right? Um, mm-hmm. But then, um, so I started to read uh, some of the books, like this one, uh, uh, Habits of Hell, um, and I realized that that I had to change the narrative. I had to change. Um, if I wanted to change other people's lives, which I've wanted to do my whole life, okay? Um, that's why I became a nurse. That's why, um, so I was a welder. I, I was a welder before I became a nurse. And what, um, I realized I needed to work smarter, not harder. Um, and at first I wanted to be a physical therapist because I would, we would build weights. Like we would weld our own weights at work and I would work out the, with the guys at, at, at the in the factory on my lunch break. But they were always coming to me, like rolling up on me, like during the work shift, like, hey, man, uh, you know, um, my wife and I are getting along or or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm struggling in this area of my life. I'm drinking, smoking, you know, whatever. Um, and I was kind of like already like talking to them, you know, trying to encourage because I was I was, you know, I, I had found God um I found God because some Jehovah Witnesses were going not not nothing against Jehovah Witnesses. But I believe in Jesus. Um, but they were trying to convert me because they knew I was a hot mess and they were trying to save my life. So I'm grateful, so grateful to the Jehovah Witnesses that reached out to me trying to save my life because I needed my life needed saving. But um uh so I found my faith though because I wanted to argue with the Jehovah Witnesses. I wanted to fight with them. Um because that was just how <laughs> Um, so I went to my to my uh, sister who was a born again a Christian, um, which we had called her the Jesus freak, um, uh, unkindly, but we did we did because she would like pray for a parking spot or pray over uh, <laughs> you know if someone was sick and she would be you know praying that you know God would clear her house of viruses and we just thought that was insane. I was like now I'd be right there with her praying and and blessing the house just like her um but right. and you know they got those jesus freak shirts so we're pretty popular I know, too, yeah. you know like this i need one because i am now a jesus freak i am i listen to um god podcast every day and and just it's one of my state you know i'm getting in the word every day and it's just one of the things one of the things that builds me up and changes my life is my relationship with God. Um, and it takes multiple things. But uh, so I went to my sister and I said, hey, help me fight with these guys. So I started asking her stuff about the Bible, thinking I was just on a fact-finding mission. Uh, and But God had a different mission. And he He pulled me in. And I got saved. And we joined a church. Uh, this, is how, this is how my wife and I got married. We, had jo- we, had, I, we were going to this church. And uh, we'd been going there for about six months. And we'd been living together for a year. And I went to the pastor. I said, hey, I want to I want to join your church. He said, OK. He said, great. He said, you two just get married, though. And I said, oh, yeah. I said, well, you know, I said, I haven't had a lot of good history with relationships. I said, you know, if we if we, we stick it out, we'll get married eventually. You know, we'll work it out. He said, no. He said, listen to me. He said, you're a Christian, right? I said, yeah. He said, if you're going to join my church, he said, you got to get married. I'm like, yeah, we will. He goes, no. He goes, you don't understand. He goes, you got to get married in two weeks. And I was like, what? And he's like, you got to get married. Like, you got to get married. Like, go get married. Mm-hmm. He goes, I'll marry you. You come to the church. We'll do it in two weeks. And I was like, okay. All right. But I, you know what? I knew my, I knew I loved my wife from the day I met her. Even as, even as a drunken idiot fool, I knew she was special. And she was the one woman who wasn't going to take any crap from me. And I liked it. She would give it back to me. And I had to chase her. I'm, I'm still chasing my wife. It's, if you know, after 30 years, I'm still trying to be the man that lives up to what my wife needs me to be because that's all she'll accept. If I start slacking, if I start being a loser, she'll call me on it. And I love her for it because I need it. 
Um, so, the, uh, so that's that's all I got my faith. But um, guys were talking to me as a welder, um, and I knew I knew I had something. I knew people wanted to open up to me. Mm-hmm. So uh, I had a GED at that time. Uh, I was dumber than dumb. Uh, there was a there was a day before I got my welding job. Before I became a welder. I went to this factory. It was a, I was lived in a small town in Ohio, and there was this one plant there where, you know, people made good money. I think it was like $12, $13 an hour, which was when I, minimum wage was like four something. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So they asked questions, but then they gave us an aptitude test and this, this math test. Dude, it was basic math and algebra. Mm-hmm. I couldn't answer one question. Not, not one. Um, I left there, I went home and I cried and I thought, oh my God, I got these children to raise, got a woman who loves me and I'm going to be stuck making minimum wage and working two, three jobs for the rest of my life. Cause I'm an idiot. And I had nothing to offer. And, uh, man, I was, I was doing some self-hating at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, I'm not smart. I'm just not smart. I, uh, I'll go get it. I'll learn how to do something. So I knew welding paid well. So I went to the local vocational school and I paid, I borrowed the money from my mother-in-law and uh, like two, 300 bucks. Cause I didn't even have that. Mm-hmm. Um, we drove a car with rusted floors and, and wooden bumpers. Um, and my kids, my kids ate macaroni and cheese and hamburger because cause that's all we could afford. My wife and I, we slept on the floor for three days or for three years. I mean, because our apartment was too small. We slept on the floor. Um, but uh, I learned how to weld. And I, I got a good job. I worked for a union. I did that for like nine, 10 years. And guys were talking to me. And I realized, okay, I can do something. So I got mad one day. You know, I, just, I got mad one day and I said, you know what? I said, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, I know that I'm not a good learner. I dropped out of high school. I had my GED. So, but I'm I'm gonna figure this out. So I went to the local community yeah. college. Yes, yeah. Um, and I said, uh, "What do I gotta do? How do I get in college?" And they said, "Oh, just come, come take this test, and we'll figure out where you're gonna go, and we'll get you a Pell Grant." Like, like I'm covered from dirt from welding. Like I've been welding all day. I've been it's hot and sweaty. And I'm like, wait a minute, I just thought I was just coming here to just talk to y'all and, and learn what to do. And they were like, "No, come, come take this." I took the test. Had me fill out some forms. They hooked me up with a school uh, alone. Like it was like happened like hours. So I went hour. home and I, and I looked at my wife and I said, uh, I think I'm in college. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I was working like 50 hours a week, 50, 60 hours a week as water and going to school at night. And trust me, I had to take every class just to even get like, like I, basic class. I had to take like math reading uh i had to take all the beginner classes that like you get in high school Mm -hmm. just to get to college level courses um so it took me working full-time took me five years to get a two-year degree um but i got it i got my i got it yeah that's that's i got my associate's degree in nursing and i i would study while i was working i was studying on my lunch break and i really believe i'm adhd because man i have to read things like six times Mm-hmm. To get it, um, I relate to that. I, I'm the same way. I, I, I got to read like if I read a book, sometimes like I flip the page, I have to go back and reread it because I forgot. Like I'm the same way. It's crazy. Yeah, and uh, I, I know that I still like write like I E backwards. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, you know, so it's tough. Uh, it's tough, but I, but I did it, and so um, you know, with everything, and you know, that's the thing. I'm, uh, I guess I want to share with people is you got to know. Like I said, you got triage this stuff, right? You, like I was just letting God lead me and thank God he led me. Mm-hmm. I wasted so much time trying to find something that was going to fulfill me, something that was going to make me whole. Um, and I would look in all the wrong places and I wouldn't ask for help. I was too proud. Um, and, you know, uh, and I wasn't reaching out to other people and getting other people's opinions um, and really just like researching and learning because, well, you know what, though? I didn't have the internet. I, I, I have Encyclopedia Britannica. 
<laughs> you know, I, I couldn't do a, a Zoom with with somebody live and and you know, uh, mm-hmm. or or you know, look at podcasts to figure it out. Like, can I get into retail or can I can I buy stocks or Bitcoin? Yeah, I had no like. We didn't even have a microwave when I was growing up. Like, mm-hmm. we had a black and white TV. Uh, so with, you know, with the, with the rabbit ears, right? Yeah, yes. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I had a guest on there always talking about that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, so it, so some of that was happening too. I mean, today, some, you know, people today have a lot more access to stuff, although it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because yeah. young people like yourself, y'all have access to sometimes just way too much. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, and it's overwhelming and um, it's confusing and you start struggling with your identity and uh, there's, well, there's, that's a whole nother rabbit hole to go down. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what I'll tell you is learn what you're passionate about and learn what it really takes to do it and go and and don't procrastinate. I think that sometimes, so the narrative we tell ourselves is either, it's either one of two things. Um, we, we can't believe our own hype. Um, is we can, we'll either tell ourselves we are not enough or that we've already arrived, um, you know, and, and both of those things can, can cripple us and prevent us from becoming more than what we are. So, you know what you do, you, you be what you are today and be happy with that. And, but you keep striving for more, no matter where you are. Um, one of my, you know, one of my favorite guys to listen to is Ed Milet. And he says, I am blissfully dissatisfied, meaning I'm blessed. I'm happy to be where I'm at, but I'm always dissatisfied because he said the man that I meet in 2022 and when I get to 2023, that man better be better. And, um, and he said, you know, and I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I'm 58. I hope 59 year old me is bigger, better, better than, than the 58 year old me. He will be. It will be all right. the, the path you're on and the fact that, you know, you, you always, you know, go to God and let him lead the way. Yeah, definitely, man. You are, you're going to get there. <laughs> you're already, you're already great in my eyes. You have uh, done and overcame so much. I mean, that is just, just awesome. Just getting to know this backstory of Yvonne. Like I had no idea and, you know, it just even makes you even more greater that you're able to get all that and still impact lives and still um you know looking forward like that's that's truly amazing man truly amazing well you know the thing i'll tell you and we all have this responsibility i think Mm -hmm. um, i mean ethically right Mm -hmm. i I mean i figured some stuff out you figured some stuff out there's a lot of people in the world that we are connected to that have figured some stuff out Mm -hmm. why would we be greedy why would we hold on to that? Why would we not give that to one another as a gift and elevate one another and share it together? I mean, when you pass somebody in the hall and you know they're hurting or down the street, why would you not help them? Why would you not lift them up? You know, I mean, how can you how can you go to how can you go to bed at night knowing that I know I could probably affect their life, but you're not gonna try. I mean, if, if you reach out to somebody and they push you away, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. You reach out to somebody and they take advantage of you and they abuse you, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But if you don't even try, what does that say about you? Powerful. Like that's sit with all my peeps out there. Like that's that's powerful and it's so true. And I, I could sit there and say, like, I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for someone generosity of trying to help and you know same for you as well yeah. it's truly amazing so for anyone of all my peeps they get something out of this interview hope you get a lot but definitely try and reach out and help you know yeah. that's yeah. awesome and well i normally have some uh some questions i love to ask all my guests because i just i just love the answers that i get uh so one of them is quotes like i'm a big quote guy i mean i keep stuff on my wall it's tatted <laughs> on me uh, what is your favorite quote or saying that you lean on during the good times or the bad times? Mm, so many good ones. Um, but I'll give you I'll give you a really fun one. Um, okay. A hot frying pan in your hand for a minute feels like an hour. 
and a hot woman in your hands for an hour feels like a minute. And it's not so much the hot woman, you know, but it is how you perceive, how you perceive something. And so when you are in a situation or when you're evaluating your efficacy or you are evaluating an event that's happening or a conversation you're having, realize that you are coming from your perception and it may not be reality. And time so that just that 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 just that perception of time was in that scenario was um how we perceived it was you know unmeasurable uh you you couldn't accurately measure and i'll tell you that the situations that you're in whether it's at work or at you know in a relationship um be open minded be willing to be willing to look on the other side of it because there may be a contrast that you're missing and a clue and a clue on how to advance your that advance your your mission and um i just I, I just found that that quote was so deep if you really if you really looked into it um mm -hmm. uh you know it's it's that um life is not what it appears to be you can't judge a book by its cover uh, I'll tell you, like, um, I did four years. I worked as a nurse. I worked on a psychiatric unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I work in general right. surgery. And mm -hmm. I work in general surgery. And um, the funny thing is, um, before I became a nurse, mm -hmm. I'd go to the, the store or the mall or a parking lot. And I just thought everybody was just like me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what I realized was um, that after those four years, uh, working on a psych unit, which loved my patients. And so like, these people are amazing to me, uh, the, the things that they have to overcome. But what I didn't realize was hearing their, their, their stories over four years. Mm -hmm. And I would sometimes like be at the store and I would see patients that I cared for mm -hmm. right next to me in the grocery store, which is okay. But what I realized was, in the grocery store, you don't know who you're standing next to. Yeah. You don't know what they're thinking. You don't know what they've been through. Um, and that opened my eyes. And now I'm seeing people with like the craziest um, things. They come in from trauma, you know, in the in uh, the emergency room and they come to see my doctors after. Mm -hmm. And if you just looked at these people, you'd have no idea what what's going on in their lives, but I get to hear the backstories. You would look at them and you'd say, oh, well, they must they must not have a lot of money or they don't have a lot of education and they're freaking scholars. Mm -hmm. And then other people would roll in and you'd think, this has got to be an influential uh, individual. Mm -hmm. and, and they got shot selling drugs. Always give someone an open mind because you're going to meet incredible people and even you can have your biases and your prejudice if you want to. Um, but you don't know what leads people to do the things that they do. It could be something really horrific mm -hmm. and they're in a lot of pain uh, and you don't have a right to judge them, you know? And like I said, I, I was a wretch. So it's easy for me to not judge others because I know, I know somewhere there in them is that, that five-year-old little boy, that five-year-old little girl who is as innocent, as sweet as God made them. And that person's still in there. They just may be trapped underneath a bunch of crap. And if I can help you get out of it, if I can help you find, find that man. That's wonderful. That is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing you know, that and that quote, that is so deep. And it's so true. You truly never know what the next person is going through. Yeah. And for all my peeps where, you know, they can reach you or even possibly want to even hire you as a coach. I know you also have your own website that you have too. Is it, it's, make sure I'm saying right, is it form.jointform.com? I have a, yeah, I have a, um, I have a, a form that I fill out and there's a QR code. Oh, let me get that in there. <laughs> there we go. 
And uh, yeah, uh, or, you know, you can just give me a shout out on Instagram or Facebook, um, uh, uh, Hope Dealers of Health or uh, Bon Peltier. You can find me. Um, just give me a shout out. Tell me you are a friend of Alvin Peoples um, and the Peoples <laughs> podcast. And I will definitely, I'll even, you know what? You mentioned Alvin and I will take 50 bucks off your first starter kid. Just because oh, you, you, know, you know my friend Alvin. Um, I will just, I'll just give you some love right back because this man is going to change the world. I'm telling you, he's, he's, he's got it going on. And, uh, uh, and I'll make sure I put all the links in the uh, description and in the video as well. Uh, so all my peeps and, uh, future audience, new audience, definitely hit up on and get that promo code too. <laughs> off. That is so awesome. Yeah. And Ron, well, thank you so much for opening up and just, you know, I know we, we didn't cover all of your life, but just, you know, some key factors, you know, <clears throat> and of course, you're always more than welcome if you want to dive on some more stuff um, for the future. But uh, just got two more questions uh, that I'd like to ask. Uh, one is uh, gratitude. Like, that's what keeps me grounded, like, just focused and wanting to change people's life. So I don't actually, what are three things that you are grateful for in your life currently? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I could I could give you a list of you know, uh, a hundred, um, I, I am most grateful for, I'm most grateful for that God has a, give me unconditional love in spite of all the things that I, I was and did. Um, so I'm, I'm most grateful for that, but, um, I am grateful for, um, my wife's love. I'm most grateful. I love, I, I'm so grateful that I, I got to experience mm -hmm. what it's like to truly love somebody and to be loved um, unconditionally. Uh, my wife has seen the good of me. She's seen the bad of me. Um, and she still keeps coming. Um, and I'm so blessed by that. It gives me courage. Um, and then, I'm blessed to be, I'm, uh, you know, uh, watching, uh, I'm grateful to be in this amazing country and uh, not to sound hokey, um, but, you know, I watch the people in the Ukraine or I watch China uh, or some of the other nations and I see what these people are going through. And I don't think we realize we live like kings. Do you, I mean, I live in a I live in a home where some families, uh, you know, would would pack 20, 40 people deep. Mm -hmm. You know, you like or one bathroom where they shared it with nine people. Or, I, I mean, I got a grocery store two blocks down the road. I can go to Starbucks. You know, I mean, I can worship freely. I can. I have a job. You know. I mean, and I mean. I, I think God was born this time and in this country. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for that. Great things to be grateful for. Thank you again, Vaughn, for being a part of the People's Choice Podcast family and just sharing, like I said, your amazing story. And not not done yet. We're not done yet. Like I said, can't wait to see what, you know, 59 to 60 is going to look like and beyond and the more people that you're going to impact. I mean, I'm just truly excited for the future. And even, you know, for, for us, I mean, we're going to be working together pretty soon. You know, yes. Um, yes, and getting myself right. So, I mean, you see me now, my peeps. I'll be looking a lot different very soon. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Vaughn. Uh, Vaughn thank you. Uh, and last question: Is there anything that you want to, um, anything, anyone you want to shout out, and anything that you like? Last message you love to say before we wrap up to all my peeps and uh, new audience. Um, I yeah. Um, so. If you are in the Raleigh area, Raleigh, North Carolina, or anywhere close, and you need a great church to go to, uh, Crossroads Fellowship on, on Millbrook, Raleigh, North Carolina, is an amazing church. Uh, we got room for you. Uh, I go to the 915 service. I'll squeeze your neck. I'll buy you a cup of coffee, save you a seat. Um, I'll pray with you, whatever you want to do. Um but I'd love to see your face, especially this Easter coming, right? Easter's coming, right? Jesus is going to yeah. roll back the stone. And uh, and uh, we're going to celebrate his victory over sin and death. And so I'd love to see you there. 
All is welcome, definitely. Vaughn, thank you so much. Yeah, I gotta get used to that. I don't know how that sounds in the other. I'm gonna have to start actually using this stand. <laughs> I probably should have been to use this, but uh, thank you so much again. And uh, I really, really enjoyed this. I really, I really enjoy this, and I think definitely it's gonna touch and reach many people. Well, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. I'm so glad to know you, honestly. And uh, if I can help you in any way, I, I want to. Uh, and you have already, and you're going to continue to uh, help me out a lot. So thank you, and thank you all my peeps for joining in. Be with Choice Podcast. This is really the beginning of year two and a half, so I'm excited for the future. Yes. And Vaughn, I'm excited for your future, too, and you have a great day, sir. You too. Thank you.